so I'm going to wedge this for a few minutes. I tell my ceramic students when they're on the pottery wheel, they need to wedge for about five minutes. Uh, you guys are going to be hand building this project, um, so you won't have to wedge quite that much. This piece I'm going to have to wedge quite a bit because there's that, you, there's that drier clay and wetter clay. Yeah. Can you see it that just the look of the clay is different? It's, it's a better block of clay. Here's an air pocket that popped. Can you see that? Um, sometimes, oh, there's another one. I want to try to get those out of the clay. Air pockets aren't really that bad in the end. I mean, some people say they make the pots Slabs. explode. And a slab is just a rolled out piece of clay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a slab. I'm going to take this and throw it down on the table. See how it's stretching? It's wrong if you do it this way. See how loud that was? It's awful. If you do that, you're doing it wrong. It kicks up dust, it's loud, and it sticks to the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, lay it down at an angle, and it stretches. Okay, I'm going to turn it a little bit. And now i got a pretty, pretty good slab <laughs> kicking up dust. Now you can take a big rolling pin. I have a couple different sizes. This is my biggest one. I'm going to roll this out. Flip it. Roll it out. Flip it. Why do you think I have to flip it? Well, I do need to get both sides, but there's a real reason why. Get all the air out. So it doesn't stick? It's so it doesn't stick. Look at how it moves. It moves a little bit and then it stops moving. Let's see if you can notice it this time. I'm going to roll it. See how it moved a little bit? Now it's not doing anything. Okay. So I've got to pick it up and flip it to make it work. Okay? So that's a good slab. It's a pretty good thickness. The edges aren't too thin. Sometimes when you roll out a slab or you throw a slab, the edges get really thin or it gets torn. <coughs> definitely don't want to do that, so you want to try to keep it a nice slab, okay? Uh, next, we're going to get some tools. I've got my slab. Next thing I want to do is I want to make the surface nice. This is a, a flexible rib. This is another one that's a little bigger. It's got teeth on the one side. What I want to do is take this. This has got some clay on it, so I've got to get that off. So I can take this and I, this will smooth off the top. Because this is kind of a rounded edge, it kind of rounds the, the clay off. So what I want to use is something like this. It's a little nicer for bigger edges so I can keep it flat. But some people don't like this because you can get the corner in there. So I have to bend it just slightly. I don't want to bend it too much because then you'll get a kink in the metal. But now I have a nice surface. Okay. When you build with your slabs, um, we're all going to build a general shape, and then we're going to make that shape into something new. Um, so I'm going to start with a rectangle. And what I did is I already cut out a pattern for my rectangle. See my rectangle? I worked really hard to find my pattern. So I'm going to lay this on here, and I'm going to cut it out. And what I often do is, when I know what I'm going to make out of slabs, I'll make a paper pattern. I'll make it out of paper first. Now this one, I knew that I was going to be working with a little simple rectangle, so I just used the little rib here. But look how floppy this is. See how it's not, it's not going to hold any shape. Um, what I need to do is I need to let this stiffen up to be able to really work with it. So I'm going to cut out a couple. Oh. surface because this is all dirty. Cut up a couple more. I want to try to get as much out of this slab as I can. If I wanted to make a rectangle box, how many pieces would I need to cut out? Six. Four. Six? Six. I have to cut out 
four for the sides, one for the top, and, and one for the bottom. Mm. What shape does the top and bottom have to be? Square. 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 Because if this is... Now here, I've got, now I've got four sl slabs, that's for the side, and now I need one for the, the top and the bottom. Oops, oh, that's perfect. I had a big spot in my head. Yeah. All right, so now I've got a nice square for the bottom or top. Can I get it out of this one? Probably. Perfect. So now I have one for the bottom or the top of the other side. So I've got my six slabs. Now I don't need this right now. And now I'm ready to put this together. Now normally what I'll have you do is one day in class you're going to make your slabs like this. Then between classes um, we stack them up on top of each other and put them in a bag. But if I stack them up like this they're going to stick together. What you want to do is in between you want to put a little bit of paper towel. And I've got paper towel in the dispensers over there. Just take a little paper towel or scrap paper and stick it in between and then set that on top. That way they don't stick together. It's kind of like cheese. You ever get a block of cheese and you pull the cheese off and it's got a little piece of paper in there? Mm -hmm. It's the same idea. Just something in there to keep it from sticking. And then you can stack them all up. And usually by the next class, they've stiffened a little bit enough to work. But if you really want to make sure they're ready to go for class, at lunchtime the next day, so if we have class today, today's Monday, our next class would be on Wednesday, which you would do on Wednesday at lunchtime. You'd want to uncover your slabs, lay them flat, and I have places that you can do that. And by class time, it'll be perfect. But if you don't cover them up and you leave them like this, today's Monday, what will they look like on Wednesday? They're rock hard. They'll always. be rock hard and be no good at all. What you want is you want them to be leather hard. Leather hard is where when you pick it up, it kind of holds its shape. It holds its shape a little bit. And you can carve it, cut it, you can put it together, and it's, it's kind of like pe looking, working with little pieces of wood, sort of, um, so they can put them together. Now, mine are very fresh, and they're very soft, but I'm going to go ahead to the next step just because I want you to see what we're going to do. So we're going to take that, we're going to put this together. Um, I could just take these and put them together like this, um, which would be fine, but I'm going to bevel this edge so I have a nice joint for them to fit on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut in a 45 degree angle off of the side. And what I usually do to do this is I want to look at how thick the clay is and it's about that thick. So I can even make a line here. I'll do that just so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to put the tip of my knife at the corner here like this and I'm going to pull that across. What that does is gives me a nice 45 degree angle. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do that to this side. And now, I can put that together, and that's going to have a nice, nice joint, because I have more surface area. Okay, next thing I need to do is score and slip these together. That's what the fork is for. You take the fork. You could use just a pointed tool. I could use the knife, but it's these are kind of smaller marks and take a little longer to go over the whole thing with a fork. All right, so I took slop out of the barrel. There's lots of clay in there, and what I want to do is stir it up a little bit so I get... I don't want this to be just water and a big chunk of clay, you know? I don't want a wonton soup. I want it to be more like pudding. Everything's food. Just, it, you'd understand better if we talk about food. So now I've got some slip or slop. Okay, I've already scored this, and I'm going to put this on. Put it on both sides. And my clay is pretty soft, so I really wouldn't have to put so much slip on it. But when you guys have your slabs and they're leather hard, you will want to put it on both sides. Okay, I'm going to join it together. Put 
put a little bit of pressure on that. And I can take a rib, clean this up. Okay, and I've got a pretty nice joint there. But on the inside, it's not very nice. So I'm going to take a little extra clay, roll a little coil. Can you see that, Joey? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, and I can lay this down. I'm going to take a little coil, and I'm going to blend this into the, the corner. Okay, I want to make that look as nice as I can. And the outside might come apart a little bit. This is where I want to take a rib. And I can clean this pretty well. You want to make sure you join your corners together well, because if you don't, when it dries, it'll crack. So that's why it's important to score and slip those together so it fits real well. Um, when, if I join pieces together like this when they're so soft, um, it, they kind of squish together. In fact, I could do this whole thing and just pinch it together, but then I lose my nice edge that I worked hard to make. Okay? Now, what's your assignment? You're going to make a, some kind of square or rectangle form. Let's see if I can kind of put this together here. I know you can hear more playing outside. Right. You're going to make some kind of shape like this. But then I want you to do something to it. What could you do to a shape like this to make it interesting? Smash it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that before. What else could I do? You can add designs to it. Carve it. I could carve it. I could add designs. I could I add things to it. it. I, well, we will burn them, sort of. I could <laughs> attach other random things to it. <laughs> yeah, let's not do that. Uh, one piece I can show you that I did. Yeah, that's the worst. I'm sorry. All right, here's a pot. Dang. Where I made this part out of coils. This is one big slab. So I made it like this little creature kind of thing with a flag coming off the side. All right. You can do something like that. I could cut holes in this. I could turn this into a birdhouse. I could turn it into, I don't know, anything. Um, I could also, maybe what I could do while this is soft is I could peel this off a little bit so it looks like, almost like a can being opened. You know what I'm saying? So be creative with what you do. We're going to start with the shape of a square or rectangle, something like this. But then I want you to make it into something. Okay? What I don't want is I don't want any dice. No dice. <laughs> Too many people make dice. They make a square dots on it. It's been done. I want you to do something different. So no dice. Okay? But you could make a house of playing cards. What if you made them look like playing cards and kind of join them together like this? So I'm not telling you even that you have to have a completely closed shape. Um, I, I'm not even telling you that you have to have all of your pieces adjoined straight. What if I join them together like this? You know, so I've got it purposely leaning out. Leaning to my face. Okay. You can do something fun like that. Now, I hope you join it together a little better than this. I'm just doing this because it's fun. You know? Abstract art. <laughs> I want you to be creative. Looks like a banana. Um, as you're working on this, I'm going to show you a couple different banana. examples and samples <laughs> of what other people have done. But this is your, your assignment. Now, we have about 10 minutes. What I'd like you to do is take some paper. And I'd like you to start sketching out an idea of what you want to do, okay?